ASEAN and European Union leaders are meeting this hour in Brussels. The two blocs are marking 45 years of diplomatic ties. An EU official says the meeting is an opportunity for both blocs to commit to their strategic partnership against the backdrop of current geopolitical tensions. Leaders will discuss the fight against climate change, trade and economic ties, as well as security issues. The EU is also expected to announce around $10 billion worth of investment in ASEAN infrastructure and connectivity projects. Let's get more from Rosie Burchard. She joins us live from Brussels. Rosie, tell us more about uh, some apparent scepticism from ASEAN countries towards the EU in terms of green legislative uh, agendas and what kind of cooperation then could we see coming out of this meeting? Well, I'm here at the summit as talks are just about to get underway. If you see lots of journalists and cameras behind me, the Belgian Prime Minister has just left to head into those talks and he is only one of many who have been filing in and talking to press. Now, you mentioned there's some scepticism from ASEAN countries when it comes to the EU's big green legislative agenda. Now, this is particularly when it comes to EU laws, which will restrict imports of goods which are linked to deforestation. There are also some moves towards limiting goods linked to uh, palm oil and also a carbon border tax on imports into the European Union. Now, some ASEAN countries see these as discriminatory, as a bit protectionist and perhaps a drag on future growth for the bloc. Now, EU countries will be trying to reframe that today. They'll be trying to sell this as instead an opportunity for ASEAN nations. And of course, ASEAN as a bloc is a huge area of economic growth within the world. Now, I was able to ask the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte about this. He said he understands the ASEAN concerns there, but that he's convinced that overall the best strategy for growth is to pursue these kind of more clean energy transitions. Now, speaking to ASEAN sources, what I've heard from that side is that they would like to see the EU being more flexible there. They said the EU should be ready to accept a more imperfect solution to try and get quick wins, particularly as Europe tries to diversify its supply chains away from dependence on China and perhaps instead to toward ASEAN, particularly when it comes to trade and goods and imports. So that's some of the kind of the, uh, the geopolitical backdrop of this summit. Of course, from the EU side, what is their big priority is trying to get this joint declaration, which we're expecting to come out in the next few hours. And in that de joint declaration, they would like tough language with regards to Russia and its invasion of Ukraine. What we'll likely get is some sort of a compromise where there is a message that most leaders condemned the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but that also different views were uh, expressed. Mm. Now, when we look at the EU footprint in ASEAN, it currently has uh, only uh, free trade agreements with Singapore and Vietnam, but there have been bilateral announcements with Malaysia and Thailand about cooperation agreements. What can you tell us about those? Absolutely. So the EU and ASEAN are each other's third largest trading partners. That's after the US and China. And the EU says it wants to deepen trade ties with ASEAN, not least because of those dependencies on China that I referred to before. Now, I had learned and understood that the EU was hoping to announce a resumption of new trade talks towards uh, free trade agreements, both with Malaysia and Thailand at this summit, but that's now been pushed. It's now off the table and instead we get these cooperation agreements. Now, one Malaysian source says they're expecting, they're hoping at least that tre free trade agreement talks will instead start in the new year. Of course, there's a new government in Malaysia, which also kind of changes the dynamics. Perhaps they're looking for a bit of dust to settle there before moving forward. But certainly from the EU's perspective, they say they want to more trade. However, it has to be trade I think in ASEAN's perspective, Brussels is saying that the trade has to be very much on Brussels' own terms, which is a bit of an issue when it comes to uh, the for the ASEAN bloc. And of course, as I mentioned, ASEAN, this huge area of economic growth, it's really seen as being caught in this geopolitical whirlwind as different, as different global powers compete there for influence, China, the US, and as we see here today at this summit, Europe. Mm, uh, indeed. Many thanks uh, for that report, Rosie Burchard, uh, talking to us live from Brussels.